me to discuss some of the work being done to make, a, make crypto more equitable is public policy advisor for the Blockchain Association, Cleve Mesidor. Thank you so much for joining us, Cleve. I am so glad you are here to explain to everybody what in the world is cryptocurrency and what on earth is the blockchain? Just really quickly, I just need you to level set and explain to us what all this is, because it's something I think about that's like rich people play with. Well, if you think of blockchain technology, you think of, here's how I define it. Blockchain is simply technology that securely verifies information, facilitates the exchange of value with our third parties. So if we go back to that, right, securely verifies information, that's the ledger, facilitates the exchange of value, that's cryptocurrency, with our third parties, those are the intermediaries, the fees, the entities that are there taxing you for your own money, right? And then cryptocurrency is, is one of the things that is possible through blockchain. And I have to, you know, say that, you know, we have various use cases that have moved forward, right? On the cryptocurrency side, we know that Black Bitcoin has been a tremendous, tremendous success as a store of value, right? So right now, anybody, as your lead-in said, can buy actually Bitcoin on Cash App, PayPal, or even on Robinhood. But it's actually better if you go on an exchange like Gemini or Binance US or Kraken, because you know it represents a <coughs> tremendous opportunity for economic empowerment especially for communities hmm. that have been left out, unbanked, underbanked, and cannot participate in the financial system. Let's break that down, though. I want you to talk a little bit more about that. And, you know, in full disclosure, I know way more about this than the average bear because I actually had a client that was a, a crypto company at one point. And the thing that strikes me about this is that we talk about decentralized and ledgers, and then we use all these fancy terminologies, and then we claim that people who currently don't even access banks or get turned away by banks could benefit from this when it feels like it's so um, intentionally sophisticated that it's out of reach from the average person. So talk about the equity and access potential of cryptocurrency, because I, I, I don't know that everybody quite gets that. So break that down in layman's terms for us. Well, I would say in your lead in, you're right, you tried to explain the, the facets of, of cryptocurrency. Those are the, those are, that's not what we have with cash, right? With cash, it's anonymous, it's secure. You pay for that banana with a dollar, there's no track and trace, there's no one sending you an email afterwards. And when you look at the cryptocurrencies that are viable, you know, crypto gets a bad, bad rap before because a lot of there are pump and dump schemes out there but when you look at blockchain and bitcoin and ethereum those two cryptocurrencies peel back the onion what you'll find is a developer community that's actually creating products and services that's what's driving the prices right so when you look at ethereum that's where nfts come from small contracts the potential for web 3.0 in bitcoin the store of value is where Anybody can participate, right? These uh, crypto, cryptography is the technology that's fueling the the new financial instrument. But when you think of the, the this crypto industry that is booming of a large market value, no one has a degree in it. No one requires a degree for anyone to start their own business. So those limited barriers of access is tremendous for people who have been locked out of the financial system. And also, right now, anybody, any merchant, any small business can create a crypto account to actually start accepting cryptocurrency. That's a whole new consumer hmm. base, right? That is transformative for a lot of black and, and brown businesses. But also, we have a lot of creators in our community, right? Black people are in music, we're in art. The NFT piece is an opportunity for us to now leverage the, our creations and market it to our network, to our communities. Mm. Those are transformative mm. use cases where we are seeing transformation for black and brown communities. Well, look, okay, so as a, as, a, as a black person myself, I raise my eyebrow sometimes um, about this because when you hear it, right, I hear you describe it, what you're telling me is that some people who ain't got no degrees, who don't really, who are not financial uh, people necessarily, who are like coders, came up with some bright idea to make up some money and then to like overvalue it, right? And then create all these schemes around it and it's being traded on some mysterious like platform that can't be tracked. How am I supposed to trust this? I, I don't understand. Like, 
especially if I'm somebody who already doesn't trust banks and am in, and likely to be in a cash economy, maybe putting some money under my mattress. How do we bridge that not only education gap, but this trust gap? Because it seems a little bit shady if you don't really know all the details. And, and shady because most people don't know the details. Right now, the crypto industry is regulated. It's regulated at the federal level and at the state level. People who pay crypto, who, hmm. who have own crypto, have to pay their taxes. Right? AM, AML, KYC regulations. You know, this is a heavily regulated industry. What's, what the uncertainty comes from the federal roadmap, right? What is the federal regulatory roadmap for how crypto fits into the regulatory system? Uh, the, the, FCT, the, the, the SEC has one stance, but the CFTC or the OCC may have another stance. And Congress is trying to get us to that clarity. But in the meantime, every your audience should know that this space is currently regulated. You know, there are states where people can actually pay their taxes with cryptocurrency. Miami's mayor created a Miami coin where actually people are actually, you know, leveraging it for, for services. And in Missouri, the mayor of, of Cool Valley, Missouri, his, 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 his constituents is only about 1,500 people, but he just announced he's going to give $1,500 of Bitcoin to all of his residents, right? So, so they, these are elected oh. officials who are leveraging it for their constituency base. And there are states all over this nation that are leveraging it again for, for products and services. For, for black and brown people, you know, we tend to be late adapters because we hear the, the concerns, we hear the hype. But if you peel back the onion, you know, this is a space that is regulated mm. where people are paying for tuition with cryptocurrency. People are wow, really? cryptocurrency. Yes. So, so <laughs> you know, we... When, when we are left behind, when we are late to the party, we become consumers and not producers. Oh, when we are late to the party, we become consumers and not producers. I love that. And, and it and, makes and, me think well, about, you know. Mm. No, yeah, no, go ahead. What were you say? Recent data just showed that adoption, mainstream adoption among black and brown people is about 20 plus percent. But when it comes to, you know, mainstream America, when we often talk about white America, it's in the 10, 11 percent. So we are outpacing, mm. you know, the nation mm. in terms of adoption, not because we're stupid and we don't know what we're doing, because people like myself, right, people like, you know, Isaiah Jackson, who, who wrote, you know, Bitcoin in Black America, you know, we have this, this, this Bitcoin, Black Bitcoin Billionaires Club, sorry, Black Bitcoin Billionaires Network, <laughs> where we're actually educating people, going into our communities. The adoption is high, mm. and even Congress is looking at consumer protections because they are regulating these 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 currencies. And so right <clears throat> now, uh, mm. people are looking at Black and Latinx adoption, and it's growing, and it's a tremendous opportunity well, for us to back our financial freedom. So it's growing, but these are still a bunch of tech bros who are running these companies. And I'm reminded no. that the dude who runs Coinbase is relatively racist in his own but, policies and has, has, by design, not decided to be inclusive. So how do we overcome that? Like, that's, that's interesting to me it, with regards to the industry. Last word here. Yeah. Last word. You know, it's yeah. crypto inherent. The problems of tech in terms of diversity, equity, inclusion. That's the work I do, right? We have a large Black and Latinx population that is fueling this space. Yes, we constantly have to fight to make sure diversity and inclusion is front of mind. But when it comes to the, we don't know who founded these, this, this space or this, you know, cryptocurrency. But we do know these people were educated. Like you do know by reading that white paper and. And Bitcoin was worth zero. It was first mined in 2009. The first time it was worth a dollar was 2011. <coughs> the, the evolution has been because people have been engaging in the Bitcoin protocol. So it sounds hmm. like, oh my God, out of the blue is worth $50,000. But you know, I, I encourage people to you know, you know, take follow me on on Twitter at cmezzi. There's a book hmm. called Bitcoin and Black America that would actually be great for folks to start reading. But this space is All right. here, crypto is here, it's growing, and we cannot afford to be left behind. Cleve Mesador, Blockchain Association, thank you so much. This is so informative. We appreciate you coming and breaking it down for us.